Starfleet Underground. Every week, we'll take a look at the latest Star Trek news and then check out a current or classic episode of Star Trek. The Packleds return, and this time they have a plan. Mariner, Tendi, and Rutherford get on anomaly consolidation duty. Boimler hangs out with some red shirts, and there's gossip about Riker's trombone cleaning. Rumdar, the Packled spy, learns that the Cerritos has the biggest bathroom ever, and he single-handedly beats Captain Janeway. No! I tell you, there were four lights! Definitely four lights. I'm serious. They have that many lights in that dungeon program? Oh my god. It's, it was, okay, okay, all right. First off, they were torturing him on the St. Andrew's Cross with four I lights. I didn't. They, they, it was, I went into the thing because I couldn't see. And then I went into a holodeck. And then what had happened was it turned out to be a Picard training episode for torture for the Cardassians. And the hologram Cardassian took way too much pleasure. And they had the lights out. They stripped me naked, which I don't understand why. And he started to, to question me about how many lights were on there. Well, they, they were trying to embarrass you. I mean, if I were you and I was naked, I would be embarrassed. No, no but he's lucky. But if, if, <laughs> if, like, if an attractive crew member walked in, then I could have gave them spear damage. <laughs> That's a lot of light for, yeah, for. It was. <laughs> Especially for your tiny little thing. Oh, my God, please. It's a grower, not a shower. So hush <laughs> but i was like wow but yeah there were definitely four lights so picard was right there were four lights however when i left i think he might have turned one off so it might have been three lights i'm not sure <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i just see the light is on i've been talking my private stuff and is broadcasting it's all started because lights. we're looking at lights <laughs> oh crap for all of from the watching the pulsar yeah it, 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 if there's a way to cut this broadcast before it gets out there because i had no idea we were broadcasting already mm, and that was like streaming god dog it yeah. okay all right thanks dot that was really well letting me know on that one <laughs> Okay. All right. We are back. Oh, actually, I am back. Back again. Nathan's Welcome back. back. <laughs> Tell a friend. Okay. Oh now. my God. No, Thank that you. was cool. Okay. It was, it was definitely some time off to try to be able to handle all that things. Well, my name is Nathan. I'm captain with this vessel and we have a full crew compliment here. We have our science officer. Hi, I'm Heather Ferris. I'm the science officer and I promise captain, I will not go to HR and tell him what I saw. Thank you. Well, first you need to go to medical to get your eyes checked. <laughs> Already did that. I was going to compliment my number one for doing an effective job at captaining last week, but he's really pushing for to get my wrath here. But anyway, he is my number one, my computer guy. Hello, I'm Patrick. I'm number one. I'm the computer guy. I'm also the foreign species liaison. And I'm not running the ship today. And also we have our engineer, which I'm going to have to talk about um, increasing the safety protocols in the holodeck because I do think they were turned off while I was in there. Our engineer. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Rocky. I'm the engineer of the show and the ship and uh, not being phased by the idiots on social media. I didn't mean idiots. I mean, negative people. I mean, no, you meant idiots. I meant, I mean, just there's a couple of them out there that made comments. I'm like. Dude, really? But anyway, not phased. They don't have the helmet to review our stuff. <laughs> exactly. They, their helmet is not very big, so no, they can go. Their helmet is not large enough. They can go take their tiny helmets and, and just play on Twitter. <laughs> oh, and that has a double entendre right there Ooh. as people with tiny helmets. <laughs> But, you know, I'm not bitter or anything. No, not you're never all. bitter. <laughs> never, never. That's okay. I heard Twitter is just a, a black hole. It's it's a black hole in disguise. I believe it. Yeah. And speaking of people who are bitter when we make mistakes, we get any corrections? Let me check subspace here. One second. Dun, 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 dun. I don't see any corrections. However, there is a email from someone named Willow King asking us if we want to donate um, thousands of dollars to get his bank account uh, open in Nigeria. No, to, oh. be, to be part of the International Association of Amusement Parks and Attractions oh. attendees list. Oh. And I'm like, hmm. Attendees? No. Uh-huh. What kind no. of parks? It doesn't say. Is, it, does anything like that holodeck program the captain was running? Yeah, no. <laughs> that wasn't for our amusement? Okay. No. Well, how well I mean, it was for our amusement, but that's <laughs> not the kind of park that, that I think he's referring to. But didn't that time we had a guest and you said that you want to see my amusement park and you gestured at your crotch, Patrick? Oh, no. did you give no. him a ride? I, that's I what not. I'm thinking about. Get the fun house. Yeah. Like, seriously, I could have sworn when I passed your corridors, all I heard was, 
Ooh. <laughs> ah. No, it was, Ooh. it was, it was more like, it was more like, Ugh. <laughs> oh, sometimes you get sick on those things. Just don't push it so deep. <laughs> yeah, um, I've learned how not to gag. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much yourself. Okay, um, next is news. What do you got for news for us, Heather? Hi, Captain. This week's news, LeVar Burton was on The Daily Show. So if you haven't already, please go check it out. It was a great interview. And he was asked about Jeopardy. He said that after his experience, he discovered he is not interested in hosting Jeopardy anymore. Hmm. Wonder why. Hmm. And he is now looking hmm. forward to creating his very own game show revolving around books and reading. That sounds hmm. watchable. Oh, that sounds cool. It really does. That sounds awesome. I can't uh, wait to I see I would that. love to watch, especially if they do like a special Star Trek day. Oh, yeah. oh there and you go. So many millions of books. I mean, he'll have content forever. Oh, especially right now, Hollywood's ran out of ideas. So they're chasing yeah. down books left and right to make shows out of books. You know, they don't re make yep. books very often. They write new ones. It's a whole different thing. And mm -hmm. I think some of those people who make the movies based on books don't actually read the books because you're like watching the movie and you're like, this is nothing like the book. And you took everything great out and put like crap in there. Well, like, don't don't get me started on Aragon. Aragon is one of my favorite favorite series for books to read yeah, but they, they messed totally that up. ruined the movie yeah, yeah they when did. you when you make a movie you have limitations and it's seriously screws up your Dude. impression if you get it from the book first and then you Dude. see what limitations they worked in and yeah well, I, they, I don't know that did. particular game, one but yeah game of thrones all i, I have to say dead. is game of thrones I I, I I i i heard it was really we'll good i don't know i have to look yeah. into that one Speaking they did a damn of, good job of, with lord them. of the rings though yeah, yeah they lord did of an the rings, amazing did job good. with that however i i need to to take my two cents in since we're always talking about diversity and equal rights but as you were saying game of thrones they quickly outstripped the books and decided to write whatever they wanted despite what george r, yeah, r. martin had said that's a good point okay they so they that. ran out as a source material and they went ahead and they did what they wanted so let's look at another hbo blockbuster that's a which good was, point <laughs> which was lovecraft country there you lovecraft go. country did so well and then they didn't do a second season. And you know the reason why? Because they said, well, we ran out of source material. So huh. if that was a stopping point, then how come you didn't stop with Game of Thrones? Yes, exactly. So because what was different did... between the two? Hmm. Uh, they they, already... they was blacks. Oh. They was blacks in the movies. Yeah, pretty much. Well, yeah. Then the okay. same thing happened with The Watchmen. Watchmen had a, a beginning first season that they changed and they did a, 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 a race swap on it that did phenomenal in the ratings. Mm -hmm. Everyone was talking about it. And then when it comes time where the woman becomes a god or you don't know if she's going to become a god, huh, no second season. We ran out of source material. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Sounds like well, there's some, some suspicions here. Pretty like much. We saw, like we saw with Jeopardy, everything is still being run white by white fucking males. No offense, Patrick and Robbie or Robert or shit, Rocky. Fuck. Who? What's my name? Fuck. That's not my name, but <laughs> that's that works. Not your name. <laughs> I mean, you can screw that out, but that's a whole other issue. <laughs> You know, um, I worked on a game show for a little bit. My community TV station that I work on in the day, my day job, we did a game show for high school kids for 15 years. And the thing I discovered, you know, the, as a viewer, game shows are awesome because they're fun to watch. You can play along. They're very entertaining. But as a in the production side of things, you see the, what the producers do and their immense amount of stress to come up with funny when we were talking about the source material, because there are so many questions you can ask. And actually, a lot of people, if they hit the book so hard, they know all the answers already. So you have to write them a certain way. And, and to get really good at it, you have to be a certain kind of individual to get stuff and I'm not describing race I'm just describing the you know the style of uh, intellectual personality it it can be very very um how would you say as a viewer it would feel jarring to figure out that's how it was produced so mm -hmm. I can only imagine what Jeopardy is like the game show of all game shows and they, can you imagine the group of people to have to produce that show something else right, right? It's, it's pretty wild well all the knowledge that you have I mean you know that they're having to come up with on a constant basis is like I mean it's probably all coming out of Watson nowadays you know the, the Jeopardy oh, yeah, 5000 yeah. but yeah. Uh, <laughs> after they had him on the show they hired him I, I mean can you imagine them 
amount of the, 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 the library database of all the Jeopardy questions that have ever been asked. I wonder how often they repeat. Yeah, maybe they should have Watson hmm. as the host. <laughs> Your you human go. intellect is not a match to mine. Your question was wrong. <laughs> you were a poor <laughs> example of a human intellect. Please oh. leave the show. When you answer the question wrong, its eyes go red. <laughs> Damn. Seriously, that would be funny. How? Uh, open the door. How? <laughs> oh. How? Now, now it's time for Devil Jeopardy, where the laser beams are twice as active. <laughs> oh my God, Watson And shade. twice as accurate. <laughs> yeah, there, there's no stormtrooper shooting on, on this game show. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, speaking of shooting, what do you got for us there, Patrick, news-wise? Oh, well, I have two things. Um, some of you might remember Jeremy Roberts, who mm-hmm. was an actor on Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. He was one of the officers on the Excelsior. And he also played a character on DS9, Season 4, Episode 3, The Hippocratic Oath. It is his birthday today. Oh, so happy, happy birthday, birthday, Jeremy, Jeremy Roberts. Ooh, happy birthday. Birthday. Happy birthday. There's a lot of trick birthdays going on last week. I believe uh, Walter Koenig was one of them, Chekhov. And uh, the other one that I mentioned, oh, Blue, Blue DeBario was uh, also having a birthday celebrated. It's Happy fun birthday. to, you know, Woo-hoo. when you follow Twitter, uh, Star Trek Twitter, as long as I have now, you, you get to recognize some of these people have birthdays on the same days as other other Trekkie people have uh, birthdays on the same day. So it's kind of cool. You know, they, they get together and they imagine they have cool birthday parties. They have group birthday parties. That would they be awesome. A, a big Trek birthday party. Party for, for everyone who has a birthday. Can you imagine how cool it, everybody gets a phaser? You get a phaser, and you get a phaser, and you get a phaser. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <Nice>. Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> you get thinking else from there, there, Pat? You got from Yeah, news? I do. Um, so there is a book coming out. It's the autobiography of Mr. Spock. And Ooh. it fills, yeah, it fills in the gaps for the Star Trek's iconic Vulcan. Uh, it was originally planned for 2018 with writer David Goodman, but it it's obviously changed. And now with the addition of Ethan Peck, Spock to the Discovery world um, and Strange New Worlds, it adds some complications. But Una McCormick, who definitely wrote the autobiography of Catherine Janeway, is tackling this. Oh. There's one Vulcan that won't be included, though. Zarek? Cyborg? Nope. Zachary Quinto's uh, Spock will not oh. be included because the, the book starts where his character ends. Whoa. Oh, wow. Yeah. So he is not a contender for this story. Fascinating. That, that. Yes. <laughs> well, based on uh, the last Lower Decks episode, we know what happened with uh, Kirk and Spock during that missing year. Bow chicka wow wow. Yes, for certain <laughs> we won't talk about it. A lot of, a lot of tre- uh, Trek Twitter also agrees with that. <laughs> <laughs> If you have a chance, this isn't news per se, but this is a nice to see. You can also Google on YouTube. William Shatner was sat down and shown everyone who's ever done an imitation of him as Kirk. Oh, my God. And his reaction. And he was unaware and in a vacuum. Really? And people actually imitated him. Oh, my God. Really? And, he, and he rates each imitation. Oh, wow. Oh, that sounds like a one, fun one to look at. Yeah, like, how do you not it? know you? you I, I mean, I after mean, Kevin Pollock, serious? I mean, come on. How can you have no idea? He has no idea. He was even surprised at Kevin Pollock. He says, I thought he was a friend. <laughs> so oh my it's God. about six and a half minutes of it. So you guys can definitely see it. It's very funny. And the one person I think he rated his imitation as being near perfect was Bill Nye, the science guy. Wow. wow. I did not know Bill Nye does a Shatner. Okay. Well, Bill Nye was in part of a troupe called Almost Live. So he did a lot of comedy before oh. he became uh, oh, the science, science cool. guy. Oh, okay. Neato. So well, that's just like a, like Stephen Colbert was in a um it was in a comedy troupe too and um yep he was uh, in an a acapella, acapella group and he's been mm-hmm. in he was in the Broadway production of Company but mm-hmm. but does he do a Shatner <laughs> that's the question no he is a Shatner he would. <laughs> Yeah, but so that's, if you guys that's easy. Get, <laughs> if you guys get a chance to see it, it was a very entertaining six and a half minutes of watching Bill get agitated, a little upset, and <laughs> kind of roasted, <laughs> especially when they had a kid do his imitation. Oh and wow! He was like, "But he's a child. <laughs> well, Why is a child doing me?" So it was pretty funny. Six, six and a half. Six and a half seems pretty uh, uh, standard for uh, Shatner. Yeah, I have to agree. Okay, <laughs> um, you had any any other news there before we move on to our illustrious engineer? 
there who's still going to and put in those safety protocols for me? No, no, he's not. I mean, okay. yeah, no, I'm good. <laughs> just just Ooh. a little extra spice on the holodeck. So what do you what do you got for us there, uh, Rocky? Oh, uh, so this is kind of cool. The, you remember all these Emmy nominations? Uh, all your favorite yeah. shows get nominated for Emmys, but only so many of them win. And uh, Star Trek Discovery, the visual effects team won an Emmy for what? outstanding visual effects in a single episode for Sukal. Nice. <laughs> So that's amazing. I uh, nice. hats off and 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 big applause and all that jazz and uh, screaming tribbles. Uh, Congratulations, cooing, cooing tribbles. <laughs> yeah, tribbles and try. Yeah, um, down tribble. Uh, so yeah, I just I've I've always been blown away at the level of quality of Star Trek Discovery's visual effects. You can point out things on the plot all you want. You can even poke a little bit at the Klingon makeup, although it is phenomenal makeup any way you look at it, even if it doesn't feel like the Klingons you grew up with. The work all those people do on Star Trek Discovery is at the top level of, now I feel like I'm starting to talk like Shatner, uh, but it's the <laughs> top level of production quality. Well, if anybody knows anything about production and how stuff is running engineering, that's you, Chief. You Definitely, definitely know it. You're our best. Yeah. So I, I think you that, are the best. That, that they win an award. I'm like, of course they do. But uh, I think it's it's still pretty awesome. I mean, there's a lot of good work being done out there nowadays in that industry. But uh, uh, Discovery is always a pleasant surprise for me. Woo -woo. Um, other news. Uh, I, another story I was looking at. The Star Trek Voyager documentary has officially released the public preview sneak peek video on YouTube. The backers have seen this video already probably a couple weeks ago. But uh, it's available for public viewing on YouTube. You just look up the Voyager documentary. In fact, let me actually click on the thing. Yes, the Voyager documentary to the journey. And it's the, the handle on YouTube is Voyager documentary. And they get like a little three minute video of just a snippet of what they've been working on. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Thanks for all that information there, Chief. You'll sure. never fail to disappoint. Now, I'm going into my gaming world here. My news is Activision. I don't know if you guys remember Activision, but Woo! there was a time where it was the golden world of Star Trek games, where they had Elite Force, Elite Force oh, 2, Bridge Commander, God. Away Team, Hidden Evil, Star Trek Commander. Well, guess what? Hmm. They're re-releasing those. So Ew. it's going to be for the honor, the 55th year anniversary. They've Yay. been updated. So they'll work on monitoring operating systems. <laughs> yeah, you can so run you them can on Windows 10. Them. Yeah, you can actually play them and they're not going to go too fast or, or give you an error message. They're supposed to actually work. <laughs> or be all glitchy. So, I thought yeah. Elite Force was like the pinnacle of gaming quality at that time when it came it out was. on the PC. Except when the part when I got stuck on it and couldn't figure <laughs> out where to, where to go, how to go. And I just, what happened is I actually got a job and I ran out of time to go back to it. <laughs> But it was But phenomenal. now you have a chance to do it. I mean, Elite Force was great because you had a chance to play, you know, tertiary characters, kind oh. of like a lower deck, but not so lower. And, and can it, you imagine the quality of the gaming now with your oh. badass NVIDIA card of today's technology? Yeah. Oh. All the pixels will just be blowing up your screen. Good. It's going to be really good. So they have two more that's going to be coming towards the future. And it's going to be our Namada series. So they're going to be engaging in galaxy-wide warfare against the Borg and Species 8. Four, seven, two. Dun, dun, dun. And if for those of you that, you know, are watching your budget because you don't have gold press latinum hitting oh, around. It's, it's very affordable right now, right? Yeah, they're going to be nine ninety nine each. And and these are the modern style games where you just download yep. and you don't have to put a CD-ROM in your machine to make them work. And then what wait two minutes to, for it to spin up and spool and, and play you a cutscene. No, no, it's all instant, right? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's there. They, they don't have CDs like the library of ATOS because you right. use CDs. Yeah. <laughs> you just download it and it's on your machine like anything else. It's yep. awesome. Is Yours it to keep as long Steam? as you have the hard drive. I'm sorry. Yep, um, Steam. Well, is it Steam or is it a different company? I'm but it's still, seeing. it's downloadable like Steam. I don't know if it was actually Steam. I thought it was something else, but it, the it technology is similar. So for people who don't like buy a lot of video games, you might not know this. If you go to the website Humble Bundle, you could pretty much search any video game that you want, and usually they'll have it for the most part, and the prices you pay are insanely cheap. Oh, that's great info, Heather. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's really good info. Someone's bucking for another promotion here. <laughs> mm, it's very, very good. Let's get to the captain's weak spot with gaming. It's a great way to get a lot of video games, like, super cheap, because they give you the bundles, because, you know, if you... If you want, like, say, Far Cry 4, it gives you Far Cry 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for, like, $5. It's, like, insane. Make sure you put that in our in our notes. Okay. So I don't forget. 
because that's definitely something I'd like to. I see four lights. <laughs> <laughs> You're so four stupid. Lights. Wait, no, I'm looking for the for the bungle. That's it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and get ready to get started on the show. We got all of our stuff out of the way. So, oh, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. Our show is being brought to you by Section 31, as well as our Patreon members. I almost forgot that because I'm still dealing with the after effects of that cross. So, again, if you're a kid and you're listening to us, you got away with it so far. But now we're at the point where you <laughs> have to go to leave. Go play a video world. game. Go play That's a video right. game. You'll be, it's this wonderful bundle of video games. You'll be busy for like months. Yes. Go download Elite Force. Video games will make you better. Yes, they will. Don't listen to anyone who will tell you different. Video games are awesome. Yeah, let's except the leisure suit, um, Harry. Oh, don't the leisure suit. Yeah, I love Larry. Leisure Suit. Harry, what you can oh, play, oh, Larry. Can you imagine so Harry Kim as Leisure Suit, Larry? Suit Larry. Yeah, so <laughs> I want to see that. That would be funny. Oh, but wow. other than that, don't play. Get out of the room. Get out of oh. here. Thank you for our Patreon people and the people who show up every day for our premiere. It is greatly appreciated. Now we go into the meat of this show. Um, Heather? Hi, Captain. So this week's episode was Star Trek Lower Decks Season 2, Episode 6, The Spy Humongous. First aired September 16th, 2021. Teaser, take me to your leader. The Cerritos is on a diplomatic mission to the Packlet planet to negotiate a ceasefire. Captain Freeman and Shax beam down to greet the ambassador, who immediately confuses her for Captain Janeway. When Freeman tries to start negotiating, the Packlet stops her, explaining, wait, we need to talk to someone with a bigger helmet. Just then, a prison break. The prisoner escaped to the Cerritos, asking for asylum, and a pissed-off group of Packlet apprehend Freeman and Shax until their prisoner has been returned. Mm. That was interesting open down there because it's like, well, please, what problem can they cause? Here are the backlets. And how are they so smart that, oh, I would be jumping ahead. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> but it was cool. And you <laughs> see the little. Some kind of subterfuge is happening with these packlets. What's going on? Yeah. You know, they turned around and they come up and they're like, I can't, you know, authorize. I don't have the helmet big enough. <laughs> Just like, what the hell are they talking about? <laughs> you know? I mean, people like to have nice big helmets, but come on. And then well, the guy comes running. You think there's going to be some sort of battle. <laughs> I thought Captain Freeman was about to get tackled and, and be called Janeway again. <laughs> you know? He just had her and be like, Mom! It was like, Rumdaw has escaped. It well, was like, you, what the hell? You know, with the uh, the bigger helmets thing, when they're talking about like, oh, you know, we need someone with a bigger helmet. It made me think of all of the uh, religious institutions out there because all of the big top dog people have these freaking huge ass hats. Yeah. And look, it's the, like, like the Pope. Yep. Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking of. Well, and the kings, of course, have crowns. So, yep. I mean, they're, they're, so, they're into their hat decorative. Uh, states. But I think they all have a size problem. I would have to agree with you on that. But the part that actually had me laugh and spit out my water is when Rumdar was on the ship and he's banging on the side of it. This ship is strong. I live here now. I, I loved that too. I was just like, oh God, he's like, I can live yeah. here. This is my home. And Ransom's like, I think he's requesting asylum. Like, what the fuck? Ransom's like, how the fuck does this guy get here? What's going on? It's like, damn. With all this talk about big helmets, Patrick, you have nothing to say on this teaser? I was going to say, well, um, Shax was saying to Freeman, she's like, he's like, you keep doing this, you know, Picard level work. They might give you an Enterprise. And she's like, I don't know. Yes, that's that's pretty cool. In Starfleet, they don't give you a bigger helmet. They give you a bigger starship. There you go. That's, there you yep. go. And, and the ultimate starship style. would be would be the Enterprise. Yes. Well, Enterprise. To, the, to the pack that all starships are Enterprise. <laughs> and, yeah. Or Captains are Janeway. Yeah. Yep. We're here with Janeway. I think that's a little sexist. All female captains are Janeway. Yeah. Well, the packlet's not exactly known for their smarts. No, so, yeah. really? Yeah, we'll have to put it on that. Is it sexist when they have an IQ level of like 40? Uh, yeah. That high? Still. <laughs> That <laughs> and and stupidity. Oh my god! Or, what's the next? Like, let's see what's going on with Rumdar. <laughs> what's our next section? Hi, Captain. Moving on. 
Act 1, Hacklid Hide and Seek. Storyline A. It's the start of a new day as the Lower Decks crew gathers around breakfast to see what the assignment of the day is. Trash duty! Only Tendi and Boimler are excited, but as Boimler leaves, he trips and spills breakfast all over himself, attracting the attention of a promising social club, the Red Shirts, dying to be in command. They convince the naive Boimler to join them. And meanwhile, Mariner, Tendi, and Sam dive into trash duty and the mountain of Easter eggs that follow. Storyline B, Boimler ditched his duties to hang out with the popular kids, but his old friends are embarrassing him with their disgusting bodily fluids. And storyline C, Ransom and Kayshawn show the spy around the ship, including their top secret gift shop, where the Packley got a Cerrito souvenir shirt and baseball hat. As the babysitter sidebar on what to do next, their spunky charge wanders off and gets lost. Panic follows when the ship's locator notifies them that there are no pack lids on board. Okay, the part, again, it shows how stupid they are. He comes in because I, I want to see your shields. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you like want, you want to look at our high, highly secure shield system. That's like, hi. I'm not a spy, but can I see your shield? shield? And the crimson <laughs> shield. I want to see that too. And the warp core. What, what the hell is the crimson shield? What's that? I don't know. But he wants I to see it. No idea. But I thought he, he must so know something funny. that we're not aware of. You know, it's like I went to see the crimson shield. <laughs> and then I like the fact that they had. Oh my God! What is his name? Shaka when the walls fell. The, the race. Keyshawn. Keyshawn. Yeah. Okay, yeah. When Keyshawn is there and he threw in a phrase, I forget what the phrase was, when he talked about how stupid he was. He's something, something with his eyes <laughs> uncovered. Bizinti when uh, he pulled back the veil. To pull back the veil. That was so funny. You know, I thought it was cute. I really thought it was cute with him <laughs> trying to do I, that. I love the way he just spits those lines out like normal lines, except he's like saying, oh shit, I didn't notice that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and everyone took it with stride. And it's like, do you think he's in any danger? He, no, he just took a picture of his foot. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I thought it was really funny when that. um when Boimler goes you know over and gets called over by uh, Ensign Casey to the Red Shirt group and they're like you call yourself the Red Shirt yeah it kind of makes it sound invincible huh oh like, yeah that I was, was like too, oh my god I was worried like, oh, about that group my god <laughs> I was I have to say I was a little upset not one of them died this episode right <laughs> exactly yeah. there I mean when you call yourself the Red Shirt you're kind of asking for it you are. I mean Casey Casey should have died. He's what at a least. Dick. Seriously. Is, is Casey the guy that on the bridge that when something obvious happens and you're just saying, uh, Captain, uh, there's a giant floating head over there. <laughs> I mean, he's just deadpans the lines. I think that's the same guy, right? Yeah, I think so. I have to go back and look. But yeah. he, he's like, we're going to have our own command one day. <laughs> <laughs> they're all sitting there and it's like okay okay they wear them they tell like you were on the titan you have great experience tell us but you know but you basically don't look like you're cool yeah you don't you don't carry on. yourself like a leader yeah yeah I, that that that's kind of the thing that's I'm, I'm like a little torn by this side of the story because starfleet does have a leader track kind of yeah, and do. it does have the lower decks track Yep. And and uh, and you know and above you know as you go higher up, but I don't feel like captains you know the great captains of Starfleet would come from this group of people no. at all. No, like not 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 one of them I can think of that would come from this group of people. No, not from that group that was yeah. standing there. No, definitely not. Although they think so. Oh, well, but they're legends they're, in they're their little, own mind. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, they're they're douchebags, so that's you know. <laughs> <laughs> Every ship has to have one. They they need so, to be on anomaly like consolidation an duty on the daily. Yeah, and they're running around obviously not doing the stuff they do because they're you know trying to be captain bearing. Meanwhile. You got the crew, Tendi, who gets to Ransom's quarters and there's all kinds of crap in there. Like, oh my God, what yeah. is he sleep? Dude, he had the crystals from the uh, Galrakian planet. Oh, that's Five what those from, were. That's why they look familiar. Yeah, from season one, episode three. Yeah. They had all kinds of cool stuff. You know, he had the, a lot of stuff. He was in the, whoever knew that Ransom was in the crystals. And yeah. and, and Rutherford's right? like, they're, they're so He's many, a Reiki master. There's so many <laughs> crystals and they're not labeled. I mean, who, who doesn't label all your crystals? You know? <laughs> I mean, that's, I feel like I have Ransom's problem with organization. You just kind of put something <laughs> to the side and come back to it later. And like next the, thing you know, you're surrounded by all this you know, random trash. Well, like if it's crystal, it's crystal meth. Skull. You don't, you don't label it. Oh my God. No, I think you smoke that, right? 
<laughs> or ejected, ejected, or, yeah. or yeah, yeah, where you end up on or, you, know, you end up on Breaking Bad. Yeah. Oh, and then what's up with with um, Rutherford? He tells Tindy's looking at this this um, bullfrog head or whatever. It's like, be careful, don't drop it. And what does he do? <laughs> Oops. Yeah. <laughs> he drops it. And then the green mist. I thought that was the green mist from the next generation, uh, Sub Rosa, where it seduced Beverly <laughs> Crusher. I thought it was going to seduce him. That's what I was expecting. But he turned into a Star Trek version of Fat Albert. Uh, I mean, <laughs> he blew I, the, up. Hey, hey, hey. the line that made me laugh was Tendy's like, You've just experienced full molecular engorgement in a matter of seconds. <laughs> Did it feel amazing? Uh, I mean, I, I, that kind of happens every morning to me, you know, and full molecular <laughs> engorgement is uh you know it it's not that big a deal does it yeah, make no. you throw up too no okay. it made him throw up too it was pretty <laughs> well it depends on it depends, it on, depends what's on being gorged. yeah it depends on somebody's gag reflex <laughs> Yeah, you know, so it is like, and and um, what you call? She knew right off the bat, Mariner. It's like put some of that red stuff on his on his lips. Yeah, that, yeah. that took it right, took care and very much took care, care of it. Yeah, and he's got clothes like the Hulk. <laughs> oh yeah, his clothes everything. came right back. He's got the stretchy outfit. Yeah, really. That's something. Even on the show, the Hulk, I never understood how everything rips off except what he's got like pregnancy pants. <laughs> they expand all the way out and back. Yeah, and that's magic well, pants. Well, no, well, no, no, it's just his his. his his hips and his waist and his butt and his penis didn't grow. Oh my God. Everything else did. No. No, no, you're saying proportionally they were already big or are you just saying they, when he's big, they're small. They're just small. Oh, oh you in were saying, that Heather? century, in that mm-hmm. century, the clothes have evolved to stretch, so that way they fit you comfortably, no matter what size it's, you are. It's a nanofabric. Something. Yeah. They're see? nanobots. Nanobots. Yeah. Oh, that explains why I never have uncomfortable bulges when certain things happen. <laughs> you have no bulge. Okay. So you I, think that's, that's due why, to the fabric. You're like, a, you're like a Ken doll. Dude. That's due to the fabric. That's why when you see someone picking their ass, they're doing it because they want to, not because they're like underwear is actually in their ass. With the it, nano fabric, there is no such thing anymore. But let's, let's also the throwaway line that also this episode had me spit up so many times is when they talk about well, Riker cleaning his trombone. <laughs> the same line. It's like, got you. I would <laughs> always blow my horn. Oh, I, I need to learn to blow something brass. I was like, what? <laughs> I would always go blow the brass. I was like, what the hell? How, how often did Riker clean his trombone? I'm like, I got, I got some brass for you. <laughs> I mean, is his trombone rusty? <laughs> Well, if he's play- if he's blowing it a lot, it won't be. It shouldn't be. I mean, oh my God. how far can he slide that thing? Oh, like, I love lower decks. It's like he's always playing with himself. Like I can't wait till I get somebody. What's he say? Blow my brass? Or like, I was too busy <laughs> laughing. It was funny as our heck. It got me too, man. Well, it was well, like, what's funny what? too is when when the uh, Pathla was on board and, and Ransom and um, Kayshawn were like, "So what? What are you on here for? You got some some sort of sex stuff?" <laughs> you know, that was funny. <laughs> that was just casually ask. You know, yeah, for, you know, for religious persecution you're gonna lead a rebellion some kind of sex stuff what's it called? And, he, and he does the eyebrow he's like some sex stuff and i didn't know where we don't have a gift shop how does a cerrito have a gift shop I, I was surprised at that i thought of all the ships in the fleet i was surprised that the cerritos would have a gift shop but they do it was decked out like a tourist at universal studios but it was a super secret gift shop yeah, super secret. I think when we upgrade our ship, we get the uh, the gift shop. I don't think gift shops come on the defined class. Defined class, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they okay. keep that at the star base. They, they it's it's, they it's, put it's it on only the on the Cali- It's a California class or above. Yeah, there's lots of gift shops in California. Yeah, and our <laughs> ship is kind of small but mighty. So, And I agree with Worf when he says that's a little ship. Little? <laughs> that's a tough <laughs> little ship. So, yeah. But he's he's ready to pack lids. is isn't exactly tell she are. I thought... <laughs> Right. Yeah, it became a a battle of wits with an idiot. (laughs) You you never go into a battle with an unarmed opponent. But what got me and surprised me is that when they're laughing at him, they turn around and he's nowhere to be found. He's gone. Where'd he go? And the computer's like, where is he? This this packlet is not on board. And when you find out what happened to him, it's like, wow, that happened that quickly. (laughs) Well, I mean, we all know it can. (laughs) It's like, is he a spy? Like, did they have some sort of, I thought it was going to be way more involved than what the answer is we find out later. But I thought, did he have some sort of new cloak or or what? The simplest answer is always the truth. Packlets are stupid as fuck. (laughs) So he went to take a dump in an airlock. <laughs> spoiler. That was a spoiler. You jumped ahead. <laughs> we're all well, trying to be funny. all good about it. <laughs> Patrick's like, 
<laughs> yeah, he, he went to take a crap. He got ejected. Oh, I, love that. I, I think I think somebody has sympathy for a guy that got thrown out an airlock. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is true because Patrick did get yeah. sucked out once. The airlock, that is. <laughs> yep. Uh-huh. So you, you know. So let's go ahead with Act Two. I, Captain, moving on to Act Two. Snail shit. Storyline <laughs> B. The red shirts give Boimler a makeover, giving him shoulder pads, thanks TNG, a uniform that fits, moving crates all day actually works, and a new hairdo. They even brush up on his public speaking skills. Storyline A, the gang continues their Easter egg dumpster dive, shocking, stabbing, and shooting themselves in the process. Then they bump into a new and improved Boimler, knocking over some nanobites as Boim Boim rushes off to his new group of friends. Mariner vents during the cleanup and Hendy's happy-go-lucky attitude really rubs her the wrong way. Starting an argument, Hendy quickly apologizes but finally loses her rose-colored glasses when she is eaten by a slug and then crapped out. Storyline C, Captain Freeman finally meets the queen and tries to negotiate a ceasefire deal, but her hat is not big enough for this conversation. Instead, she's pissed about the packlet prisoner and wants to talk Talk with him. But there's no chance of that happening as Ransom tells the captain about their missing guest. Freeman stalls insisting that he's in the bathroom, which technically was true. <laughs> the Keen, who has a larger hat, enters the room, and before Freeman can finish her elevator pitch, the Emperor with an even bigger helmet enters. Freeman is getting ready to start her speech over again when the group of rebels storm the palace, kill the Emperor, and declare freedom for from tyranny, become seduced with power, and declare themselves the new tyrant, all under five minutes. Freeman reacts with a double face palm. That was kind of funny. Because <laughs> that was look hilarious. at this. Oh, we're, we're free. I, we no longer we can't we be controlled. And oh, look at this helmet. It's shiny. Look at that. Put it on my head. Ooh, look at him. He is strong. I, yeah. Just like follow the idiot with the helmet. Yeah, good idea, guys. We don't I am want the to new emperor. <laughs> we don't want to listen to any of the helmets. Ooh, helmet. You yeah. must so baby yeah. now. Yeah, all under five minutes. We should do an on-the-spot correction so we don't have to do it next week. Uh-oh. Um, Heather said nano bites instead of nanobots. Well, if they bite, <laughs> it's kind of a small bite, so. Yeah, that's like really minuscule. Like, you would be really hungry like a millisecond Dude, later. The I only l- way a nanobot gets into your body is if they bite you. Therefore, they're nanobites. <laughs> well, technically, they can move the cells around in like a... Like, like, like they got tools, Speaking. nanobots. It's and they uncomfortable. Can, they wouldn't even need to bite you because they're so small they can get into without having to bite yeah. you. <laughs> what was well, my chocolate-covered have- nano bites? I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Those would be bits. It's like Pac-Man. As long as you don't give me mush fruit. I don't want mush fruit. Oh, so. mush fruit. Oh, <laughs> oh mush fruit. Yeah, no, you, you want some rotten mush fruit? I'll, I'll yeah, pass. Ro- rotten oh. mush fruit, good. I'll, good. I'll, I'll pass on the mush fruit. They make you strong. I, I was dying at the, um, the captions because when they came in and and said revolution, but it, it sounded more like revolution. Said, revolution with a B. Uh, I was uh, laughing at that and it's like, and at the same time going, wow, they're really nailing the pack lids a little bit here. Well, and then when the queen, when the queen said, oh, well, my helmet's not big enough for that. And uh, Freeman's like, are you shitting me? Yeah, I know that was funny. Yeah. I mean, even though they bleeped it. But you notice this is the first time. This is the first time we've seen a female pack lid. I thought so too. I'm like, wait yeah, a minute. There's never been a I, female well, I saw a couple lit. at that bar oh, wow. once, but I don't remember what happened the night after <laughs> well you know what they're kind of like you know dwarf women they um they, they spring from the ground and they look so much like dwarf men you just people get them confused no 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 i was looking at women they were they were pack lid women they were very attractive and very friendly and i had a drink with them and then i don't remember what happened after and i just woke up in a hotel room oh dear you took a and drink your, and your pants were around your face never take a drink from someone at the bar no even if they're pack lids no no pack lids might actually double dose no i <laughs> I, I thought I heard them when they left. They were like, Chief is strong. We must have more. What room was he? I don't know. <laughs> so that's why you, they were gone. They couldn't find their way back. Well, they, wa- they wanted to help with their impulse drive. And I was like, oh, sure. I like looking at impulse drives. And next thing I know. He told me he was downloading data to my receptacle. Oh. Ew. So 
<laughs> well, let's 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 move on to yeah. some spikes in my face okay, rather okay, than right. you know, Rock, Rocky oh, getting that? busy with a pack lid. Well, you can kind of understand why Mariner is upset because every the next three well, rooms well, they go to, Tendi's, shit happened to her. Tendy's like, oh, let's do the things. Let's let's fool around with this. Let's fool around with that. This is fun. It's experimenting. It's exciting. Well, Tendy's breaking everything, and Mariner's suffering suffering for it because you know, <laughs> she got bubble gum to the ceiling and everything. Yeah, it's like Tendy touches the clock, hands it to Mariner. She gets electrocuted. It. Yeah. Here, hold this the, zap. Sorry. Like, Look how good this flower smell. <laughs> it is spooges in her face with darts, so she's not feeling anything. No, Amanda's she's not having a good time. Mad. In fact, she's seeming <laughs> really more upset than normal. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah with well, I think she's pissed that Boimler went off with the red shirts. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Because it would have happened to Boimler. Boimler was there, but she, it, it, it rolled to her by default, all the bad stuff. So she was not a happy camper. She was definitely not a happy camper. And we know in order to look captain-y, you need shoulder pads. What is with the Always. shoulder pads <laughs> thing? I, I don't know if that's... That, see, see, this is the other thing about shoulder pads. Sometimes it looks good on people, but sometimes it's like, why are you wearing shoulder pads? To make you look captain I mean, we're not in the 80s anymore. I don't I don't think it worked for... Bo- Bo- well, the thing that worked for Boimler is the hairdo. The, that was kind of cool when he got his hair flipped a little bit. But he, And also when he put on a size too small shirt, <laughs> they looked well, ripped. That's That so kind of helped too. The, first off, the, sh- the shirt that made him look ripped, they just switched the fabric. So that way it was the fabric that like expands or contracts depending on what your body is. And he just lifted a lot of crates. Um, mm. But what you were saying with the other thing, which I don't remember what were you saying? Shoulder about? pads. Shoulder, Shoulder pads. pads. Thank you. That was from the next generation. They wore shoulder pads in the next generation, so they were sort of making fun of that. Yeah, but I make fun of people that wear shoulder pads most of the time, unless they're a football player. Yeah, because Worf wore shoulder pads. True. Well, yeah, he was also kind of looking like a football player. Yeah. So it has to look right when when you when you're somebody like um oh what's your McCain um on, on the view mean? on the view yeah she um put shoulder pads Megan. on a lot and oh my god it does not work for her at all Neither nobody told hair. her this that was somebody somebody tell that poor woman don't wear shoulder pads like that it does She's not, not work on for the you. show anymore thank goodness and they so. kept rerunning the fucking show every yes. time i'd walk through my house when my parents were watching it they were watching it. then she just got fired yesterday why is she still on no it's <laughs> reruns and look yeah. at those shoulder pads oh those look bad on her and not rerun from what's happening so yeah anyway that's my shoulder pad rant he did a little rant well you know shoulder pads can make you look can look, make you look like a man it can even it even helped Nathan. <laughs> Okay, where's the button? <laughs> what was the point of shoulder pads in the eighties? It was it was the eighties. It was just a fashion choice. It was oh, just a fashion choice. Back there then. was no point. No. I have an expensive leather coat that still has shoulder pads in it. It's yeah. a duster that goes all the way down, but I will not wear it until shoulder pads make a return. Also, I look like a I belong in an aha video. <laughs> so, but the but I thought it was funny when they gave him. It's like okay, we're having all these problems now. We got this riff and this this plasma thingy and Heather broke the replicator. Tell us something, <laughs> Capney. <laughs> Give us a speech. We demand a speech. And Boimler's speech made them go, uh, we're committing mutiny. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny, but he was able to channel Riker. Yeah, he he was able to go. Okay, he kind of bombed the first attempt, but the second attempt, he he st- swung on and and knocked it off in the center field. I mean, it was really rousing. Yeah, he should have gotten a Rituvian flask for that. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like the cat eyes that they give when they were all like little puppies, like oh? They had the little yeah. watery anime eyes. <laughs> yeah. I liked how they had Boimler like mess it up the first time because sometimes I, it really bugs me when shows or TV shows or movies or whatever they're showing this you know compilation of like them doing stuff and getting better and that type of thing and they don't often show the screw ups usually the person just starts off like oh mm. look they're doing it that's like, true no the person probably had to fall flat on their face like a hundred times before they oh, that's, do it that's true but then when he nails it I mean the background just changes to the the bridge of the Enterprise D I'm just like he's yeah like, they're really pulling at the hard strings right there but it's it's kind of like go boimler because yeah, initially they're looking at him like dude you are so lame like lamer than lame 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 like yeah. wesley crusher lame but but he's <laughs> really not boimler is wesley. not that lame i mean dude. yes he has he has occasional um pratfall kind of things happen to him and, and 
Tendy finds that hilarious, which she and should because it is. Wesley Crusher was awesome, so fuck you. No, I mean, I mean how everyone perceived Wesley Crusher. Not not everybody perceived, perceived him that way, though. No one thought Crusher was cool. No, 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 no. I like him. Thought, you know, I thought he was cool too. And then I, I discovered this cool. thing called internet news groups, and they all fucking wanted <laughs> yeah, to kill they him. All hated him. They, they literally had a news group that says Wesley Ooh. must die or something to that effect. I mean, God. people hated Wesley Crusher. I never no idea I, mean, I personally yeah. liked him myself but you know he wasn't that bad no just no. because he was a wonderkin nobody likes somebody younger than them knowing more than them uh, and that's yeah. why they they didn't like it they didn't it's like just you trying thing. to fix your computer and you have a seven-year-old comes up and he tells you well the reason why it's not working because you get the environmental specs set wrong because your buffer is entirely too small you need to go on your swap drive and increase the buffer to two times maximum of your ram shut the fuck up and have a coke get out of here <laughs> Hey kid, you're bothering me. It's like, I've been doing this for 20 years. Well, obviously you missed that part somewhere in your 20 years because that's wrong. Yes. <laughs> that's like why they didn't like him. That's probably why I like him. I like that about kids. Well, <laughs> they, they can point it out like really easily. Yeah. Well, it was funny when Ransom and um, Kayshawn are, are running around trying to find the pack lid, Rumdar, and they're like, Kishan's like, where is he? He's giant and brown. I know. Right? <laughs> brown was like the color of the show because it was also, what was it? A uh, a brown uh, mark on our, our record or a brown smear, a brown, a big brown packet brown, smear packet on my smear. record. Yep. Uh, if yep. they failed the packets. The brown shit in the airlock. I just yeah. had to put But then you yeah. had Dr. Miliko who they find that he gets stuff and it opens up and you Me- get Meglimo. Okay, oh, Meglimo, what, what yeah. Patrick just said. The bird doc. Who the hell is going to have live action Three Little Piggy books? The <laughs> doctor. I know. Well, when you have an ener- when you have an energy field storybook, I mean, Three Little Pigs will come to life, but they come <laughs> to life as giant hogs. Was that the first time we saw a book like that? Yeah, okay. as far as I know. I, I mean, that's like it, really... Didn't Data have one or something? There was one that went like that on a holodeck in some Is that episode? where his cat came from? It's, if anybody like, knows, let us know in the comments, please. It's like a classic sci-fi like TV show feeling thing but to then me. But the, then the slug that screamed like a woman. <laughs> what the... <laughs> <laughs> and it swallows Tendy up and then poops her out. And then what was really funny is that in order to make the slug turn into a form, they had to hyper spray it in its ass. And it was yeah. like, and it gave the Google like, Ooh. it's like, oh, what that come from? <laughs> it, it shrunk down to googly eyes and it looks so, so cute and <laughs> some dude. Oh, the, like, the other thing wow. about the, the artifacts that they were collecting, the nanobots, I was surprised the nanobots did not attack Rutherford right away. It, it instantly went no, it to Mariner's Mariner. hand and started to envelop her arm, which was quite funny to watch happen. But it, I was like worried for Rutherford instantly. I'm like, they're going to get the cyborg and take over him. But they didn't. No, well, they, 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 they must have had some, you know, grudge against Mariner, like every other character on the show eventually ends <laughs> up having that you find out because <laughs> she's she's lived there. She's worked there. She's She's been there. <laughs> this stuff is eating my fingerprints. So I'm just like, oh my goodness. No. That must tickle. <laughs> that must hurt. And I love what she's like, who among us hasn't been pooped out by an alien creature? That was, yeah. And then Tammy yeah. assumed the position of a poor victim. She, she looked a little traumatized. And, and this is weird. Yeah. Just a little. She was she, upset. I, I felt sorry. She was, yeah, she was. And because you you imagine this great day and everything goes wrong with and it. And your friends hate it and they're complaining. and Yeah. yeah. But you, you can't have a Mr. Rogers attitude all the time. I no. mean, yeah. It, Being no, a Pollyanna is not a good thing. No, it isn't. Um, I think we covered everything in this section. Did we I skip it. anything? Yeah. Yeah, I oh, think so. Uh, but the last thing, though, um, when Tindy first gets swallowed, Ma- Mariner's like, don't get digested. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that was funny. And it, and it didn't. It pooped yeah. it right out. It must not like Orion's. Okay, Heather? Oh, mm. God. It doesn't like green food. I was just say the green didn't yeah. interact well with the brown. <laughs> it's not It's not liking vegetables. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, Captain, Act 3, be careful what you wish for. Storyline B, the red shirts try to kill Boimler's friendship with Mariner and the others, criticizing his social circle. Boimler stands up for his friends, pointing out that, you know, they do more work than the red shirts. Storyline A, still fuming from before, Tendi picks up an artifact that seriously fucks with her mood, eventually turning her into a giant scorpion monster. She bursts into the mess hall, going on a rampage, while the red shirts are standing there, posing and giving their motive 
motivational speeches, all at the same fucking time. Boimler rushes into action and saves the day, giving a whole new meaning to replicator food fight. Pendy laughs so hard that she turns back into her old Orion self, but the red shirts are less than impressed. Storyline C, as Ransom and Kayshawn take a break, looking out into outer space, they wonder where the hell did that packlet go? Just then, an almost dead packlet floats past the window. Tiana saves him, and the first thing out of her mouth is, what the fuck? Apparently, he mistook an airlock for a bathroom. After sending his ass back home, Freeman manipulates the spy into revealing the packlet's secret plot to bomb Earth. The Packlets celebrate their victory as Freeman and Shax beam back aboard the Cerritos. To tie it all up, the Red Shirts kick Boimler out of the club, but he gives such a good farewell speech that all of the other club members leave too, except Casey, who achieves his goal and advances into acting captain. What's his first duty? To clean up that unspeakable mess the Packlet left in the airlock. Meanwhile, Ransom is giving Boimler a heartfelt compliment about showing real leadership during the Scorpion mess. And our favorite Lower Deck crew has a heartfelt talk and apologizes for their earlier offenses as a peace offering, Tendi shares an artifact she stole from the trash that allows them to broadcast their voice to other planets. So the first thing they do is prank call Armus, comparing him to a big bag of crap. That had me oh like I was so was awesome. hard towards the end. I was not expecting Arvis at the end. That was fucking hilarious. Oh, I am the master of this domain. God. It was great. And you know, we're touching your stuff. <laughs> Don't do that. that what what stuff? I mean, it was, they might have well said, your refrigerator's running. <laughs> Go get it. <laughs> it was so and then funny. Tindy at the end, she's like, you look like a big puddle of shit. <laughs> oh, that was perfect. I, I mean, if there is one character that deserves that kind of harassment, it was it's, Armus. It's Armus. Yeah. 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 I mean, I will admit that. Now, if anyone who doesn't know who Armus is, that's the tar monster who killed Tasha Yar in the Next Generation Season 1, Episode 23 skin of evil and man if you want to feel the early sci-fi writing styles of the, the the late 80s that right there was it if you watch that episode he was evil but like really tweaked i mean like like bad bad cartoon character evil style yeah right he was like yeah, i'm the skin of evil i wish i had someone to torture <laughs> <laughs> like um yeah okay we know <laughs> and he's just sitting there bored and everything funny. like i got nothing to do it's like, I will kill you with the fleck of my evil. That was so funny. But they got him. They got him good. They got to be careful, though, because he could have star 69 their ass. <laughs> but he can't leave. <laughs> He just stuck so on they the just planet. put him on ignore and ghost him. <laughs> Which, do they have, do they have Star sixty nine in, in uh, the Cerritos time? I'm pretty sure they they have well, something sixty nine. I, I know, know they have block. Yeah, I know they have sixty nine. I know they could block his ass. <laughs> yeah, they do have sixty nine. So we know that. <laughs> but let's go with with Tendi finally getting upset because she picked up the cube. That cube was vicious. That pink cube. I had mm -hmm. no idea that little pink cube would have been so evil. Mm. It really yeah, channeled I, her hate. The mood shifter? Yeah, she really got oh. mad. That's what the color pink will do for you. No. Turn you into hate monster. Hello? <laughs> no. I've seen too many hate monsters in pink. <laughs> but they try to calm her down and she's just like, I hate the Cerritos. I hate how stupid everything is. I hate, I hate, I hate. Well, she, I mean, I, I first, you know, kind of related because She's like, hey, clean it up out of these people. I'm not their mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but then, yeah, then she said, I hate this place. And she's like, no, Tendi, you love this place. Don't you remember the first episode where you looked out the window and was just like, oh, this is so cool. Yeah, but it really, it shifted her mood from what it normally is, which is happy-go-lucky to yeah. the opposite. And I love the solution to that problem was Boimler. Yes. And, and meanwhile, the, 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 the red shirts were being idiots and drowning off speeches at the same time. Boimler's Dude. like, uh, hello, guys. Guys, we got to do something. It's like, we are doing something. Like, no, you're not. Motivating the crew. <laughs> well, and it, it speaks to how close they are and how much they, they know uh, um, as Lower Deckers that Boimler knew right off the bat that it was an attack and mood shifter. Yeah. And knew, yeah. Exactly how to, and knew exactly how to bring her down. That's that's the difference between, you know, being yep. a captain and, and actually being a leader, you know. And yeah. having experience and be willing to self-sacrifice and yeah. put himself in harm's way. <laughs> or yeah. com com comedy's way. To try to fix it. And being a douchebag like Ensign Casey. Yeah, and willing to burn his hair, to burn his haze. You know, <laughs> beans hot. 
That was great. Oh my God, that was so funny. And I love that, that, that uh, Tendy's the kind that appreciates that kind of comedy. I think that's hilarious. That's great. And yeah. the whole, like the, at the very end when they're in the, uh, the Sunday and all of that food and it's all hot and they're just like rolling around in it laughing. Now so we were she- talking about expandable clothing. Tendy's yes. clothes were not all expanding the right way. Cause we saw some leg right there. I thought yeah. that was pretty nice <laughs> look for her. And they had some leg and a little cartoon cleavage going on. So, yeah. yeah. Which was cool. But she laughed. And again, he knew from what had happened that morning with him making his breakfast up. He knew what had happened was. <laughs> yeah, he knew what happened. <laughs> the solution. He said, I got I got exactly the solution for this. will make This will break the spell. Make her laugh. You know. And Laughter just like, is the, the grand, you know, combiner, you know. It, 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 everybody loves to laugh. We see that one time where his useless knowledge of fanboy Star Trek you know, stuff actually comes to uh, to use because he's like, I know exactly what that is. Like it, what it, you guys were saying before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Nerds will help save the world. Just like I yes. don't know if anybody ever saw the Tomorrow War on Amazon mm-hmm. is when they were trying to figure out how this thing could be somewhere else by volcano thousands of miles away. They had this one kid who was obsessed about volcanoes and they <laughs> asked him and he goes, finally, a moment I've been waiting for my entire <laughs> life. <laughs> <laughs> that was a cute moment, you know. So again, he has the knowledge, and as a captain, when you get to be a captain, all of that mundane, useless knowledge will eventually come in handy. Yeah. It's well, the the thing about the red shirts trying to be captains. It's it's not about speeches and insp- inspiration. Nope. Not not that's not the whole thing. Um, I thought they were kind of looking at it as uh, actors would looking at acting a captain in Star Trek because. Mm. It is a wonderful role. I mean, and it is, it's got good juicy bits and there is romance and excitement and adventure and and all that good stuff. Yeah, sure. That's a great reason to be a captain on Star Trek. But to be a captain in the world of Star Trek, it's definitely not all about the speeches. Yeah. No, it's got to be knowledge. Well, Casey was such a freaking douchebag, man. He's like, yep. he he's is. like, we, he's like, we work in Starfleet and they work for, Star- work for Starfleet. Like, Dude, you're just a fucking douchebag. Uh, I mean, too much of himself. <laughs> uh-huh. You know, this isn't a friendship. It's a starship. Are you a star or not? I mean, right. Like, whoa, hold on, dude. Like, go oh, cut, cut, cut. You're, you're, you got yeah. the role wrong. And if, <laughs> if, if, if slime is a given in, in, uh, in a lower decker's life, then <laughs> let's, let's slime Casey. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He could like, use a little bit of slime. Being he should have. Uh, he should have uh-huh. suffered the red shirt fate. He, mm-hmm. Being a captain is more than just giving a speech. He should have been shit out the airlock. <laughs> you you yeah. really need to know not only your knowledge, you also need to know how to leverage your crew's knowledge and not just give a motivating speech. Yeah. You, you got to know. I love, though, at the end, he got put in his place because know, he's like, oh, he gives me, oh, I'm acting <laughs> captain. Awesome. Yeah. And then he walks in there and, and the entire command crew, oh, let's go get some drinks. Hey, you stay here. Yeah. <laughs> and then go clean up the shit in the airlock. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Yeah. He, he gets like a second in the chair and then the second sh- the next shift comes in. He's like, get out of here. You're in my way. Yeah. <laughs> the backlit did something unspeakable on airlock 17. <laughs> you go clean, clean up the airlock. Up. It's a mess. Go take care of it. <laughs> oh my God. That was so funny. You know, bounced him right back to Ensign Hood. Yep. Well, mm-hmm. he, he deserved it. But again, a boiler gave a captain speech without being captain because he got the other red shirts to go, like, yeah, we should do our duties now. Yeah, we're, we're, <laughs> well, out. even uh, Jen the Andorian kind of flipped a little bit at the end. It's like, oh, maybe there yep. might be some hope for her. Maybe. Oh, yeah, that's true. Except for that one guy. And that, that the, the, one, the one girl asked him, asked uh, Boimler out. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, the, see, that's, yeah. that's the other thing is um, at the end, Boimler was not necessarily like, I mean, he, was, he, he demonstrated the actual leadership capability. And that's what was kind of hot about it. Like mm-hmm. he had the confidence to do what he needed to do the moment it needed to get done. And that's a beautiful thing. That's Starfleet Captain 101 right there. And that's right. why and that's how like, you get all the chicks. That's <laughs> why <laughs> women love they're men gonna, in uniform because it, it denotes confidence when you see it. They're going to go see the Winger Bingston show and watch him play all of Jupiter's moons. Yeah. I don't know who Winger Bin- it, Was that a reference they no, made up? I yeah, don't know who be. it is. It has to be because I never heard of it. it maybe that'll lucky, be on the next episode or something. And if he's lucky, he can play with her moons later. Hey, so, there you go. <laughs> but I also like how the captain 
turned around when they were on the planet and Rumdar's like, I fooled you. You did not know that I was a spy. Oh, you are such a masterful spy. Tell us your <laughs> secret so we can see just how masterful you are. Oh, my, my, my masterful plan was so good. Here, let me tell you about it. It was so secret. I, I did not tell you we were going to take a Peruvian bomb onto Earth. Hmm. <laughs> it's like, you truly are a master spy. And, and, and they go, Rumdar. And they all look at him like, okay, they're going like, to yell like, at him. They're going to yell at him. And they're like, they praise him. You <laughs> Just, just beat Jay Captain Jay Way. Way. You just Day beat Jay Way. Let's celebrate. I, I love the Packlids in their in the enthusiasm they have. It may be placed completely in the wrong area, but they have it. All the way. I hope you guys also are grateful because we did have a Packlid that um requested asylum and requested to be a crew member on this ship. Uh oh. I turned it down. Good. So <laughs> Just point them. Well, once point we, them to the Patreon account. What? <laughs> once we got the sub manifold casting stone, we could call back to his home planet and get references. And they were like, "No, he's stupid." Yeah, it was well. Even if another pack leg calls you stupid, you're pretty much done. Yeah. So, like, yeah. <laughs> and after that happen. one experience with the packlet on board, where he was trying to um, eat the tribbles or sit on the tribbles or lie with the tribbles or no, 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 we're not doing that again. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. That was not fun. No. That fur tickles me. So, yeah, not <laughs> and good. And then they would squish him. He, he like, freaking sat on one of my... I'm just... Don't get me started. But it was it was kind of cute when they get back, and you can see how much of a tight-knit group they are, because Boiler's like, what did I miss? I miss giant Rutherford? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Big so, Body Rutherford. Uh, that's it. Big Body <laughs> Rutherford. It's like, I miss Big Body Rutherford. That was funny. So, and again, it looks like she's going to wind up, Mariner's mom is going to wind up going further because she's been winning the assignments lately rather than messing up. Yeah. <laughs> the funny thing is, it's it's still kind of, uh, it's not necessarily an act of great captainism. It's the act of the Packlid. <laughs> Well, she was supposed to broker peace there, but I don't, I don't know it's, that she actually brokered peace. It's it's like if your your mortal enemy is the Packlid, you, you're going to do well one way or the other. Well, yeah, because she left without that uh, ceasefire negotiation. Oh, yeah, that's I wonder true. If, if they're going to be yeah an oncoming force in the next few episodes. Is there going to be ramifications? Yeah, but she discovered their secret of, of putting a bomb. Oh, so that's true. A secret spy. That's true. All the secrets. So that's going to be really interesting. Um, however, for those of you that was concerned about it, the winger Bingston, he was a Starfleet Science Division officer that was on the Cerritos at one time. Mm. And so he's the one that's giving the show. So that is what he's about. Okay. That's why. So I just wanted to give you guys that that information. Dot just handed me a pad with it. Apparently, Dot is listening to our show being live streamed. <laughs> I didn't know our Dots became fans of us, but apparently they do. So that's a good thing. But other than that, this was a really good show. And of course, I'm excited to do this. Heather? Captain? What is your rating? What is your oh, rating on it? I thought you were asking me something else. Um, well, that's later on. <laughs> She's not going to pee on you. Stop asking. <laughs> no. Oh, I like my God. sonic showers, not golden showers. Go ahead. Holy crap. You want another the light think. in the shower, sir. I, I can put another one ah. in there, but it's golden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I my rating for this is an 8.5. I thought wow. this had I thought this had a perfect balance of Easter eggs and original content and you know things that happened for the first time, new devices we never heard about mixed mm -hmm. in with you know all the Easter eggs and everything and then they're continuing the story with the pack lids and I think overall it was just a really really good episode and I'm really enjoying Lower Decks and I think Lower Decks is definitely my favorite series out of all of them. And how about you there, Pat? I'm going to give it an eight. I think it's funny because, I mean, even though this, the episodes are only, what, like 35 minutes long, they pack so much into it. It seems like it's a, a, a right. longer show. Because you're like, like, how is it There's possible so that they got so much into much. so little time? But they do. I, I feel like my summaries are way too long. But if I leave any of it out, it's just I can't. And it's it's a lot. And it's then we lot. don't we don't even get to all the Easter eggs. There are so many no. Easter eggs in there that we don't even get to or talk about or anything. And it's just amazing. How about you, Chief? Oh, I was uh, enjoying this episode a lot. I mean, it's all the same things. It's it's there's so much in there and it's so good. I like the um, the fun excitement of new things happening 
and, and the zaniness of some of the goofy things that happens with the lower decks. I wasn't feeling the, the, the red shirts as much um, mm-hmm. because those guys were a little stupid. But, but I, you know, you have to have a subplot in there somewhere and they stuck them in there. The pack lids are their own classy classiness, <laughs> lack of classiness. Uh, I, mean, I mean, come on. The, they have a big bathroom on the Cerritos, right? <laughs> the biggest bathroom ever. <laughs> I wonder what the bathrooms look like on the Packlet ships because that's got to be one messy room. Oh, apparently, it's just know. a floor. <laughs> he mu- it must have been. Uh, never mind. I'm not going to go into oh, that. That's okay. way too much. That's TMI. That's oh, TMI. Yeah. Don't want. Don't want none of that. But I would like to give this one a nine because it was pretty high up there on my scale. I mean, it was it was definitely above the last couple ones. I I think. Um, watching the show, I was actually thinking of the rating, and I was while watching it, I was going to give it like an eight until the very end, and the what they prank called Artemis bumped it to a nine to me because I had tears in my eyes. I couldn't even see the screen. I was laughing so hard, especially when they go, you know, you quit touching your stuff. Stop touching my stuff. Wait, (laughs) what stuff? (laughs) I I, I mean, of all the, 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 it's just the perfect prank call. I mean, if you're going to prank call somebody in Star Trek, why not Armas? Who's yeah. who's planet locked and can't get revenge? Yep. And <laughs> so, everybody hates that that uh, monster. Nobody likes that monster. So it was perfect. Well, I mean, he killed Tasha Yar. So yeah, I know. and he feeds it's- on the misery. I mean, just, what a dickhead! You know, yes. And then the, the classic lines at the end again that had me in tears. He's like, "When I find you, I'm going to kill you with a flick of my power. I'm a skin of evil, more like a puddle of shit." Damn you! <laughs> 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 and coming coming from Tindy, that was like you know, Dead, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Was Tindy, Tindy was vicious this episode. Uh, <laughs> I didn't realize she was a Scorpio. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, oh shit, that's right. <laughs> oh, that's wow, come catch. on, Captain, catch, catch. catch up, catch up. That's so hey, cool. look, look. Okay, I'm dealing with my body aches from being tied to that friggin' St. Andrew's cross, and my vision <laughs> is finally getting perfect like again. So I even per, the doc- per, 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 well, I didn't say my speech isn't perfect yet. <laughs> even the dot the dot volunteered to give me a back rub. So I thought that was oh, pretty nice. cool. Yeah, except it has metal arms. <laughs> so <that's not> <laughs> you gotta right. let them heat up a little bit. Once they get to the room you know? temperature, it's a little bit better. So but I'm not gonna do all of that. And despite everything that happened last week and in the holodeck, so thank you, number one. You did a great job. Thank you. And Chief, you always do an amazing job when it comes to everything for engineering and of course our wonderful science officer who takes the time to write up everything and to do the research um, i think i have like the best crew in starfleet so i'm thank pretty you, pretty happy with everybody and we have the best captain oh you thank are you. so awesome very inspirational well, sir you know. thank you definitely you know we may not know what the show will be next week we may not have an idea of what the show will be next week but as starfleet officers we will meet this challenge head on <laughs> And come up with a new way of being able to describe the show for your pleasure. So make sure you. Okay, that do we know a, what's going on next what week? We, no, no, we don't. No idea. No. We no have clue. no. I don't think it's out yet. Hey, um, no, Pat, is no, it out it's yet? Not list, it's not listed. Okay, Just episode two point seven is what what it's called. So far. Tune in next week 2. to find 7. out what the show is next week. <laughs> next week, <laughs> really. And thanks everyone for showing up for the premiere. It was great to have you guys watch the live stream. Unfortunately, I'm still tied up and I. I can't break away as much as I would like to for the live stream, but I will try my best. So until then, I hope everyone enjoys themselves. Thank you for participating. Remember, you can find us out on the internet at (laughs) Starfleet. underground.com that's the you easiest way to go us there yes yeah. and you can find us on soundcloud you can find us on itunes anywhere you can get a podcast you can find us as well as on youtube and while you're on youtube looking at the channel for us there make sure you stop by vegas aces oh, where thanks. heather teaches classes on how to be a dealer for free. That's right. I said the Ferengis hated four letter word free. <laughs> so make sure well, you watch it. There's tons of videos there. You know, yes. I had that. I went to Corks once and I had that huge argument with that Ferengi and I just I'm doing it to spite them. That explains it. Yeah. That's why we get he, I had to set up a filter so the hate mail doesn't get to you anymore. <laughs> But it was really, really bad. He was saying things he like, you know, human with the tiniest lobes ever. Like that's supposed to like insult you. But I guess for them, that's an insult. Well, anyway, thanks everybody for joining us. And please be careful out there. Remember, not just have a great week, but 
Make it so. And if you can, support the show by going to patreon.com slash Starfleet Underground. Lots of perks to choose from, and you might even like some of them. Starfleet Underground, beaming in to a podcast feed near you. Lock on to our website at starfleetunderground.com and send your comments and questions to the collective at starfleetunderground.com. Follow us on Twitter at Starfleet Under G and on Facebook and Instagram, we're Starfleet Underground.